Nick Rance, I'm Shreeman. As I promised in the previous video, if you have watched on qualitative analysis, I told you that in this video, I'll be covering some memory tips, memory tricks to memorize all the complicated inorganic QA reactions. So here I have hmm, a half complete mind map. And you're probably going to ask me why in the world is it half complete? I want to help you, okay? Because in every single video, I'm just telling you the content. I want you and me to recall the content, retrieve all these equations from your brain and reproduce it. So we are going to do this together, okay? So in this video, I actually wanted to cover NaOH equals NH3 as well as Na2CO3 in the next slide. So I'm going to start with NaOH equals, okay? So they give you a test tube during the Q&A. You mean a QA, I'm sorry. And then you need to add NaOH equals. First thing you should do when you see NaOH equals, right, is number one, expect a PPT. This is a really important one. So, okay, we're gonna add NaOH equals drop points into the test tube. Let's visualize this. Now, the two things that can happen, either there's a PPT or there's no PPT, which you guys know. So let's look at this. One, there is a PPT, yay. So when there is a PPT, right, you are testing for a cation. I, I believe you guys know this, what, what a cation is. So the charge of the cation becomes the number of OH. And what do I mean by that? Let me write it down for you guys. Right here, you have a two plus charge, cation. That means that in the, in the, the precipitated form, it will form OH2. So the magnitude of the charge is transferred as the number of OH. Simple? Yes. Now, in certain cases, right, some of the precipitates color changes. And what happens during color change is this thing we call oxidation. So you'll see this vigorous bubbling and the precipitate changing color. So there are two, what do you call, two ions, two cations that create this color change effect. One is Fe2+, and the other one is Mn2+. Fe2+, turns from green to... Let's try to recall this one. Let's try to recall. Green, when it oxidizes, Fe3+, right? Precipitate will be brown, okay? So this is fairly simple to follow. Mn2+, right, has a really interesting color which it's kind of like ice cream, okay, but a bit more on the yellow side. So a good way to represent is peach. So you form an off-white PPT, okay, which is the color I talked about, which turns rapidly brown. This is a really important point right here. In both cases, it turns brown, but the initial color differs, okay? And what is the thing that's formed? Basically. You have, let me show you, M and OH2, okay, because it's a 2 plus charge, 2, right? Oxidizes, it becomes 3 plus, so it becomes MnOH3. Simple enough, right? So I hope you recall the concept. Now, so far we only talk about drop wise. What if it is in excess, okay? You're adding NaOH equals in excess. The thing you should ask yourself right now is, which are right here, dissolve. Does the precipitate that is formed in the yes section, okay? Does it dissolve? First, it doesn't dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve, it's very simple. It's just the PPT right here. There's nothing to think about. It's the same as when it was in the drop Y section. Now, if it dissolves, right, we're gonna split this into two parts. Let's think of the three cation with the precipitate, which will dissolve in excess NaOH which is Al, zinc, and chromium. Now, these can be subdivided, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you why, how you can memorize the complex that's being formed. Al, OH3, right, becomes Al, OH4, minus the charge outside. Basically what happens here, right, you add an OH group, okay, this is one way. For the remaining two ions, which is 
chromium, like chromium 3 plus, and zinc 2 plus, you double it. So for this one, it becomes from OH3 to OH6. For this one, from OH2 will become OH4. Where I get all these numbers? Back to this point, one charge becomes number of OH, okay? Now, let's look at the other section. What if there is no PPT that's formed nope. and adding it dropwise? Oh no, okay. If there's no PPT, there's two ions that's possible. Barium 2 plus and calcium 2 plus. But most exams, right, will test you on barium. Maybe mixing it with sulfate ions or something. Calcium is a little less common, so just note this difference right here. From adding dropwise, right, they will proceed into two parts. Okay, there's no PPT and we're like, what the hell man? So it will proceed into two parts. Either they ask you to do aluminium, add a piece of aluminium foil and heat it. In this case, let's recall what are the ions you're testing for. And in this case, it's anions. Think about it. Okay? NO3 minus and NO2 minus. And the subtle difference, if the if the test goes on, right, the subtle difference between these two is you use H plus. So any acid, you add it to it, right? Both of them will give different observations, which I wouldn't explain. You can see itself, you can see it for yourself in your own school notes. All right, there's no aluminium foil. They just ask you to heat. And this is a key, key test for what ion? NH4 plus. Because once you have NH4 plus in the heat, right? You produce NH3 gas. And what you do is Get ready, litmus. Okay, what do you mean by litmus? Get ready your red litmus paper and make sure that this litmus paper is damp. I can't emphasize the importance of this. A lot of people don't damp their litmus paper and then the test becomes false. So, this test for NH4 plus. And what is the other error pointing to? This is a bit more, a bit more rare. Okay, now, give me, let me give you the ion. CO2 plus, okay, you add an average. What does it form? Copper hydroxide, COH2. Now, when you heat your copper hydroxide, what does it become? What type of reaction is this? This is a decomposition reaction. And when this decomposes, it will form copper oxide, which is the color of this marker, okay? And that is all for NaOH equals. So we are going to go to the next one. Take a small break if you'd like to NH3 equals. Now when you're adding dropwise, if there is no PPT, which is the first case, it's back to the same thing. Ethereum or calcium, okay? So it's back to the same thing. Ba2 plus, Ca2 plus. It's pretty similar in fact, both of them are almost the same, okay? Now, you're adding NH3 and you see a PPT. Yes, there is a PPT. Now, we're going to see a PPT, right? You just follow the same as the NaOH equals example that we thought about. The charge becomes a number of OH. This is what happens to NH3, right? It slightly ionizes to form NH4 plus and OH minus. And this OH minus is the same as the NaOH equals, just that this is a little bit less concentrated, okay? So it's the same as the NaOH example. A simple example is that you add dropwise NH3 equals to Cu2 plus, okay? To form copper hydroxide. This is the exact same thing. Now, in excess is what it differs. This is dropwise. In excess, right, there is two complexes that are formed. And most of you guys are really familiar with this. So it is Cu2 plus and Zn2 plus. These are the ions, okay? So what are the complexes that are formed? Cu, NH3, 4, 2 plus. And zinc is the same thing, okay? And pretty much, that's it. That's it for NH equals and NH3 equals. Okay? Next, we're gonna proceed to 
sodium carbonate. And this exact, this entire picture is in the description for your own reference, okay? Okay, I have any 2 co 3 equals test, okay? They ask you to add any 2 co 3 equals to a test tube. And the first thing I want you guys to understand is that this comes before B. And I'll tell you guys why, okay? You're adding CO3 to minus, okay? And let's look at this equation and imagine that the test tube contains Fe3+. Plus. And this is just a complex, okay, of Fe3+. Plus. This thing will strike this thing. It will react to produce CO2 gas, which is responsible for the effervescence. Now, once this is consumed by the Chatelier's principle, if I got it right, the equilibrium will shift to the right. So then, this will shift to the right and produce the PPT. Okay, this is just a simple explanation. Alright? So please note this point. As we move to this five scenarios that Cambridge loves to test, there are five cases, okay? Let's have three things that could be inside the test tube. H plus, some 2 plus ion, and some 3 plus ion. Let's try to fit each of these in each of these categories, okay? Follow along with me. One, you just have effervescence. There's no PPT formed when you add any CO3 to minus. So this indicates that it just contains H plus, okay? H plus reacts with your carbonate ions to form your CO2 gas. Simple, right? Now, effervescence to give you white PPT. This is a bit interesting. I'll go into this one later. Let's look at five first. Just a white PPT. If it's just a white PPT, then it's just an X2 plus. Okay? And some of you guys will ask this question. Why can't it be aluminium 3 plus? Now, aluminium 3 plus, guys, is acidic. Okay? That would mean that you would have some H plus in the test tube that would react with, with what? With the CO3 to minus to form CO2. So it can't be aluminium right here. And where else can aluminium be? Let's look at this one. Hmm. Effervescence to give you a white PPT. Clearly aluminium can be in here. What else? An interesting combination of H plus and what else? A 2 plus ion. Your 2 plus will be responsible for the PPT, your H plus for the effervescence. So this is like an either or, okay? Good. Now, effervescence for a colored PPT. When this is a transition metal 3 plus ion, right? With a 3 plus charge, the solution will be acidic and will react with CO3 to minus to form CO2. So there's effervescence and a colored PPT. What are the two ions that are in the syllabus? Chromium 3 plus and Fe3 plus. Both have different colors, right? And this one will be chromium hydroxide, not carbonate. Not carbonate. A lot of people will put carbonate and that is wrong. And your notes will explain it, so I wouldn't want to go into too much of that detail. So 3R3 plus and Fe3 plus. Can it contain H plus? A bit too far for Cambridge to test you, okay? So we will ignore that. Effervescence plus white plus color. So this is this could be actually all three of these things. Or it could just be an X3 plus and X2 plus. That's it. That's it guys. These are the five scenarios that Cambridge tests you for carbonate ions that you need to know when unknown ions come during the exams, okay? So I hope you guys found this video really helpful. Hopefully you guys can share this video with your friends, do subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for my next video, where I'll be talking about a bit more of the unknown, like really weird reactions and how do you tackle them. I'll be covering that in the next video. So thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for my next video. Bye!